Hello everybody, I am Dr. Jitendra Pandey and I am your instructor for this module on social engineering. Information system security management depends not only on technological measures that are put in place but also on managerial endeavors as well. Large number of technical defense have been implemented but less importance have been given to non-technical factors like social engineering. This module is designed with an aim to introduce the learners with social engineering. After going through this module, the learner shall be able to explain social engineering, define social engineering attack cycle and know how a social engineer perform a social engineering attack. Typically, many organizations have information that has value that justifies expensive protection mechanisms. Critical information may include patient record, corporate financial data, electronic fund transfers, access to financial assets, and personal information about clients or employees. The compromise of critical information can have serious consequences including the loss of customers, criminal actions being brought against corporate executives, civil law cases against the organization, loss of funds, loss of trust in the organization and the collapse of the organization. To respond to the threats, organization implements information security plans to establish control of information assets. Information security plans specify protection mechanism for organizational information. There is usually a heavy reliance upon technical security mechanisms such as firewalls, user passwords, closed networks and operating system protection mechanisms. There appears to be a belief within the computer and information security professional that everyone understands the operational security requirements for protecting information. The disclosure of information through non-technical means can and will occur. This type of disclosure can bypass millions of dollars of technical protection mechanisms. In many cases, if an impending attackers want to gain access to a computer system, all they have to do is ask for it. Users have disclosed a variety of sensitive information including the names of employees, organizational costing information, telephone numbers to organizational modems, and customer data. Surprisingly, user identifies and passwords are extremely easy to obtain. Let us start our discussion with defining social engineering. Social engineering is a term used for a broad range of malicious activities accomplished through human interactions. It uses psychological manipulation to trick users into making security mistakes or giving away sensitive information with or without the use of technology. According to Webster Dictionary, social engineering is the management of human beings in accordance with their place and function in society, applied social science. It is the conscious manipulation of people to obtain information without realizing that a security breach is occurring. It may take a form of impersonation via telephone or in person and through email. Some emails entice the recipient into opening an attachment that activates a virus or malicious program into your computer. The basic goals of social engineering are the same as hacking in general to gain unauthorized access to system or information in order to commit fraud network intrusion, industrial espionage, identity theft, or simply to disturb the system or network. A broad view of social engineering attack lifecycle has six phases. They are research, developing rapport and trust, exploiting trust and utilizing information, clock activities, and evolve or regress. Now we will explain each of these steps in details. Let us start with the first step which is research. It is an information gathering process where information about the target is retrieved. The attacker gathers 
as much information as possible about the target before starting the attack. Some methods are obvious and require no great cunning or planning, while others require certain skills or knowledge. If industrial espionage is the aim, the attacker learns everything about the victim or the organizations with the help of all available resources, social networking sites, etc. Typical information that may be gathered could be an internal phone directory, birth dates, organizational charts, personal records, social activities, relationships, etc. The second step of social engineering attack cycle is developing rapport and trust. The social engineer capitalizes on the psychological aspect of trust. The target is more likely to divulge requested information to an attacker if he trusts the attacker. Rapport and trust development can be done by using insider information, misrepresenting an identity, citing those known to the victim, showing a need for assistance or occupying an authoritative role. Once trust is established, the hacker will be able to start acquiring sensitive information and access necessary to break into the system. The hacker will work hard to maintain an apparently innocent relationship while learning company lingo, names of key personals, names of important servers and applications, and a host of other valuable information. If an attacker feels hesitation in the voice on the other end of the phone, he or she will stick to simple questions and hope to gain more information from the next individual he or she chooses to call. The larger the organization, the easier it is to establish trust. In a smaller environment, the target is much more likely to know whether or not the attacker is who they say they are. Trust is important to establish both as a technique on its own as well as in combination with other techniques. The third step of social engineering attack cycle is exploiting trust factor. When a target appears to trust an attacker, the attacker exploits the trust to elicit information from the target. This can either take a form of request for information, a request for a specified action from the victim, or alternatively to manipulate the victim into asking the attacker for help. This phase is where the previously established relationship is abused to get the initially desired information or action. The fourth step of social engineering attack cycle is utilize and execute. The outcome of the previous phase is utilized to reach the goal of the attack or to move on to further steps which may be required to reach the goal. The execute step is where the attacker does something that is clearly illegal or not allowed. For instance, when the target is asking to submit his login information or when the nefarious emails are sent. The fifth step of social engineering attack cycle is recruit and cloak. Cloak is the actions performed after the execution, actions performed in order to hide the illegal activities. It can be to continue with the friendship to normalize the actions, moves to make the victim seem untrustworthy or more advanced techniques to hide the crime. In some cases, the victim can be recruited to either work for the attacker or as an ambassador or reference for the attacker. The sixth and the final step of social engineering attack cycle is evolve or regress. This is where the attacker learns from the process and creates an internal justification for what has happened. There are basically two choices for the attacker here. Either the attack evolves, moving into another phase of the attack if the process has been successful up to this step. The other choice is if the results to this point have been unsuccessful, which can either be to stop the attack or to move to a more basic level of attack in order to be successful again. The gathered information can then be used to target and explore more deeper into the victim until finally attackers convince their target to divulge the information they need to achieve the goal. 
So these were six phases of social engineering attack cycle. Now let us discuss how a social engineer performs a social engineering attack. A social engineer may approach you either through a telephone or an email and pose as a person from your information technology department or help desk and may ask you for user ID, password and other details like systems and network information. A social engineer may meet you outside of your workplace or organization and may ask you about your work and how your organization does the things. A social engineer may come to your organization to present business needs and may ask for network connectivity to know about network information or any other sensitive information. A social engineer may ask your identity card to know about your personal information, about your school, organization, etc. The basic goal of social engineering are the same as hacking in general, to gain unauthorized access to system or information to commit fraud, network intrusion, identity theft or simply disrupt the system and network. In this lecture, we had defined social engineering and explained about social engineering attack cycle in details. We had also discussed about the ways a social engineer may perform a social engineering attack. In the next lecture, we will discuss about different types of social engineering and mechanisms for defending against social engineering attacks. Thank you.